In the previous video, we were able to find a formula for to work out present value, okay, or past value. And all we did was just to look at our formulas P, uh, sorry, um, my future value equal to present value 1 plus I n, and we just solved for P, or in my future value uh, P 1 plus I to the power of n, same thing, we just solved for P. Now we're going to look at I, if I have to work out the interest, for example, what was the interest rate I earned if I invested 15,000 Rand and received 20,000 Rand three years later? Okay, so here we go. Let's draw a timeline. Always draw a timeline. Okay, timeline 0, 1, 2, 3. So here was 15,000 Rand at this time and 20,000 Rand at a later time. And we want to know what was the interest rate that we earned in the meantime. 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's do the same thing. Let's go and try and work out a formula for these two. So starting with A, okay, that's simple interest. Here's the simple interest formula, 1 plus I N. I want to know interest. So all I need to do is solve for I. Okay, and here we see we can't go inside the bracket yet. We can only get rid of the things that's outside the bracket first. So let's get rid of the P by dividing P on both sides. Okay, so here that cancels. And now we're left with F divided by P is equal to, and just the bracket is left, so I don't need to write the bracket. So 1 plus I N. Next, to get I on his own, I can get rid of that. 1 by subtracting it on both sides, so I take my future value, I divide it by my present value, and I subtract 1, and that will give me my interest times my number of times I got interest. So now, to get I on its own, I must just divide both sides with an N. Okay, so everything on the right hand side gets divided by N and everything on the left hand side. So that my final formula, here we go, it's an ugly formula, but it's cool that we don't need to remember it. F divided by P minus 1 divided by N. Do You see, I don't need to go and memorize this formula. I can quickly go and work it out. Okay, so all I need to do now is do my stock taking. Do I have my future value? Yes, this is my future value. That is my present value. My future value is 20,000 Rand. My present value is 15,000 Rand. I also need N. Okay, I also need N. That's the number of times I got interest. I got it every year for three years, which means I got it three times. And I is my interest rate that I want to work out. And all I have for that is a formula. 20,000 divided by 15,000 minus 1 divided everything by a 3. Let's go and see what that answer is. 20,000 divided by 15,000 gives me an answer of 1.3333. That is for the numerator. Okay, so subtract 1. Okay, and now divide by a 3. Divide by three that gives me zero comma one 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 so this answer is zero comma one one re repeating okay so if we were to round it off if that means my interest rate if I were to multiply this with a hundred will give me eleven comma one 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 up to eternity so I'm just going to round it off so it will be eleven comma and this is sorry I can't just do that without putting a percent this is 11 comma 11 percent that is my interest rate if I were to get simple interest how about compound interest okay so compound interest the formula my future value is equal to 1 sorry my present value 1 plus i to the power of n 
Same thing, I divide both sides with a P to get rid of the P. I want to get I on his own. So now I have that 1 plus I to the power of N is equal to F over P. And now how am I going to get rid of this bracket to C? We have the bracket to the power of N. Well, we do the inverse of exponents are roots. So we'll take the nth root, but what I do on the left hand side I must do on the right hand side, the nth root. So that on the right hand side I'm left with 1 plus i, but because I, I only have the bracket left, I don't have the exponent left anymore, I don't need to write the black bracket. I've got 1 plus i equal to the nth root of my future value divided by my present value. And then finally, just subtract the 1 on both sides to get i on his own. So i is equal to, and there you see you can be so glad you don't need to remember this formula. You can just go and calculate it every time. It's actually very easy. Okay, so there we go. That's it. So all we need to do is substitute all of the values that we have. So let's do our stock taking. Our future value we saw was 20,000. Our present value was 15,000. Our number of times we got interest was three times because we got interest three times over three years. And now if we substitute all of this, we get the cube root of 20,000 divided by 15,000 minus 1. Let's see what that gives us. So we take 20,000 divided by 15,000. This is what comes underneath the square root. Okay, so we're going to put this, not the square root, the, the cube root. We take the y root, the third root of that, and we get that answer. We subtract 1, and here it gives me 0, 0,100642. Zero comma one zero zero six four two, and it goes on more. Okay, that is what I would be now. If I multiply I with a hundred, that's now my percent answer. It would be ten comma zero six percent, six four two, blah 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 blah. Okay, but now since I've multiplied with a hundred, I must put my percentage, which means divide by a hundred. Okay. Otherwise, I'm changing the value. And finally, if I just round it off, if I give my rounded answer, that's 10,06%. And there we go. Not that bad. Now, finally, all I want to add is that you didn't have to go and solve I first. You could have first substituted all the values. So you could first put in all the values, for example 20,000 uh, in the position of F, oh that's too many zeros, 15,000 in the position of P, okay, 3 in the position of N. You can first could have substituted the values and then solved I. That for some people would probably be easier. But if you understood this method, there's no problem in doing this method either. Okay, so choose the method you prefer and stick with it.